around, and uh, we have head coach Jakob Nystrup and William Klem with us today. And uh, yeah, fire away, Daniel. Nystrup, there are a few scares. Nystrup, there are a few injuries. A lot more than we expected. And uh, Diego and Fulo. Yeah. Could you tell us if it was a really, really important match if they were playing? This is a massive game for FC Copenhagen and uh, we put the absolute strongest team out. Uh, we, we will play with everything we've got. It's going to be extremely tough. Uh, Rasmus Falk had a little uh, knee injury which has caused him a few problems and if he played the game tomorrow there would be a bit of a risk that he, he could he, he could he could be uh, kept from playing on on Sunday in the Superliga the other two is expected to play on Sunday uh, uh, in the Superliga game you, you don't have Falk or Klaeser with you. You have William next to you. Is, does that mean he's a, a captain tomorrow? No. It gives uh, the impression that we have a young, uh, very important player. We want to to really bring his talent forward, and this is his first uh, press conference. And we will see him in the in the start uh, from the start tomorrow. Next up, you have played with blows three and four at the back. What what are you tactics will you take tomorrow? It all depends. Can we cover the whole of the the, what, the, the pitch widthness with four? Uh, I think in the first game we we, we got the answer. That the last game we played in Parkham can be very very difficult. Uh, with Peter, with five at the back, so too far, too defensive. Uh, we'll, we'll have to wait and uh, see for tomorrow. Uh, just, we could go either way. Just to turn back to in relation to who's captain tomorrow. What, what is your thoughts in relating to the captain you are picking for tomorrow? I might. Uh, I might already have chosen who it's going to be, but I am not going to say it here at this conference. However, who, whoever it is, um, uh, he's got to be one who's got uh, to be proud of, of wearing the, the armband and also be competent. competent. Can you just put some words on how big it is to play in a, a last, last 16? Uh, match in the Champions League is the furthest FC Copenhagen got before. I'm, I'm fine with this. We're playing a, a knockout stage game tomorrow. We fought very hard to get into this position. We know we're 3-1 down. We're playing against the best team in the world. And it's close to impossible, but uh, We will be ready for this, and we will really uh, try our absolute best for the for, for for Danish football. It doesn't matter if we're three one down. We'll keep trying. We'll keep trying. And everyone's going to be believed they can do this. Anything can happen at any time. Mm. We have to take the chances when they happen. If we do get in the little marginals, we have to take our chances. We might not be able to get through, but it makes a massive difference if we put in a good performance rather than completely fold. It might not be enough, but we are going to try everything and be aggressive, and go forward and do the absolute best we can do. We are not going to throw the towel into the ring here. We're going to give it everything we've got.
apart from chasing the miracle tomorrow, what else would you be thinking about tomorrow, thinking about what happened in Herning last week? Even if we'd won in Herning last week, the good, the way we play has to be good, and we have to bring us forward to tomorrow's game. And if we play well, we play according to our plan, and we're closer to three point next Sunday, then it's about how well we play and chasing it down. Have the confidence to do it. This is, it might be a miracle, but we have to chase it. And, and we have to finish a European, even if we lose and we get knocked out, we have to put it down as, as well done by uh, FC Copenhagen. What kind of game would it be for you tomorrow? Uh, it, it's, it's a massive game for me. It's the uh, last 16 in the Champions League knockout game. Uh, obviously, I was brought up in the club as a little boy, so it's ex extremely special to, to, to play in this game. And the first start uh, since I've been injured for four or five, three or four months, I'm going out to show what I can do and give, give everything for the team, give it some power. You have chosen to take William on into the game and onto the conference. But it's, it's, William is not going to be pushed in, down the ramp, uh, the, the push him into. William is a good player and he can do a lot for FC Copenhagen um, on the short on the, on the short term and be a big player long term. Get him established in, in, into the team. Show his competence as uh, really look forward to seeing with uh, his with the rest of the team tomorrow with him. Are you the coming captain at FC Copenhagen? That is not my decision, but of course I'd like to, to have that honour. Clip. This match in Seville in 2022, we really noticed you as a player, know your name, so therefore what does this Champions League um, season mean to you considering Seville was the, was at the time, what really put your name into, onto the map. It's a massive thing for, for every single player, we all fighting for them and everyone dreams about playing in the Champions League so it's, it's obviously a dream come true obviously special for me in Seville two years ago or in 2022 last couple of days talking about what, what's the, the odds against uh, been told they're very high against FC Copenhagen. Well, what do you think the odds are playing City? I'm not going to put some uh, odds on this. It's uh, very, very tough. All I can say is it's going to be a very, very tough game tomorrow. And we have to score three goals. They can't score. But there's, we are not here to. We're going to do everything we can to to take us in this game that we're not going to hide behind any excuses it is what it is and we're going to give everything we've got and hopefully when the game finishes tomorrow good or bad we can look ourselves in the eyes and say we, we gave it everything we had football can be a game where you're totally under uh, in in the trenches for 35 minutes and then suddenly one little mo mo moment in the game can change it so why not why not for us tomorrow we're going to chase every moment we give you've uh, you, you found your groove with the team in the Champions League in the, in the autumn uh, obviously all four players are out how, how will that affect the team 
We know it's a knockout game. We know what we're up against. We know we've got players injured. We've had a lot of injuries in the last 18 months. Then you think, this is quite annoying at this point. But it does give some... Uh, yeah, it gives the other players a chance to show themselves and we have a good squad and we'll, I'm pretty sure they will do and one of them will step up to the game tomorrow. You started this Champions League game back in Iceland early part of the summer. There's a massive risk it will finish tomorrow as you know. What, how, can you sum up from Iceland and start the season all the way through what, what? I haven't thought back our last game against Kalatasaray uh, in the last uh, last round and then we've been on holiday for a month it's winter break and, but I don't think back we're thinking about the game tomorrow we live in the now this moment and then it's the Super League and next week uh, that we have to start to cut compete in and make sure we win. We, we've already uh, congratulated ourselves with, uh, for the Champions League games in, in the autumn by ourselves and everyone on our success in that, but we live in the, we live in the moment and life goes on, so we are playing for tomorrow. Champions League is important, but you've also know, mentioned over a number of times that Super League is the most important thing uh, for this season. Does this kind of get in the way of this for this game? No, this is a massive game. For Danish football, uh, for our nation, uh, do you want, would you not rather be home and focus on Super League? No, absolutely not. We're playing against the best team in the world, of course we don't want to be at home, we want to play this game. You, you mentioned. By the mere fact that you are Super League East has got your priority, would that affect the game or what team you put together tomorrow to protect the, the team for playing the Super League? No, absolutely not. We will. We played, uh, uh, we played um, Herning, uh, FC Midtjylland last Friday, and we play a lot of games, uh, but tomorrow we, we are playing the best team. Of course, we'll put the, the best, um, best game team we could probably put onto the pitch tomorrow. Is any top players who, has, uh, who normally gets into the to the first team, is there anyone who's been sacrificed for playing in the Super League on Sunday? No, absolutely not. Only Iceland's failed, and I've already told you why. Um, during these games, Champions League games, you, you, sub, you accumulate some KFUM points that you'll get, even from this game. How, how much focus have we got to get these points? Yes, we have a big phone focus. We're not, we're not going to lie down. We're going to fight, uh, give it everything we got. We know it's impossible, but as I said, small margins, but also one good game, little things can make uh, a tight come, and it might, we can be. One game here or there uh, can tip the game, and it can give us a very good rate ranking for, for next year. We've got everything to play for in this game, even if we lose. One single goal can make a massive difference for us. What's the key? What's the key to get a good results tomorrow? There is a lot of keys needed. Uh, have a whole key set. We have to defend really well, of course. Even if you want to know, we're going to be under pressure in massive parts of the game. We're going to be under pressure, uh, just like. The 19 other Premier League teams when they play at Etihad. If you look at the last game, it was pretty, uh, 
pretty good and pretty happy with the second uh, second half uh, status of play. We we held them pretty well in the uh, under control in the sec in the second game, but of course from from being pressurised to to transition and go forward. We need to be braver on the ball, and, uh, so, so we have to defend well, but be braver on the ball and control the ball in the uh, transition phase going forward. forward. And obviously, Williams brought in to, to be part of this because that's his strength. He can put the passes together that can bring us forward so we are not just booting the ball up, uh, up the field to, to, to get rid of the pressure. Uh, Guardiola has uh, been impressed and said that he's s s strong defensive uh, d defensive position you put you, you play with. I know you can't say a lot tactically, but how, how do you do you see you can you can break down the dominance of the uh, interchanging uh, when the a ball passing during the game? The, the few times in the first game when. We, we did press them higher up the pitch uh, in, in the second ball phases. Didn't happen a lot, but it's going to be that's going to be tougher here because the ball circulation, the speed of the, the passes is going to be really tough to press. So we're going to we're going to have to probably defensive and then. I mean, obviously they're so tactically astute and technically absolutely brilliant. It's it's going to be very, very tough to, to press them high, so we're going to have to be compact. But no doubt, when we get on that ball, we are going to have to put some passes together and at least perhaps take the pressure away and take our chance at this moment. Yeah, if we can, if we can put some more passes together going forward, I mean, we, we can stand strong, but going forward we need to be a little bit brave on the ball. Some of the best players of the world you're playing against. How, how are you going to? Uh, are you going to ma mark any of them, or how do you control so many world-class players tomorrow? That's no one specific. They are pretty good, uh, covered in all positions, so uh, the attacks can come from anywhere. And uh, we, I think, we have. There's not going to be any man-to-man -man marking on any of them. What What is the key to keep them away? Uh, from scoring. It's, it's going to be very, very difficult. We have to defend as a team. Like, like we did at the start of the season, we have to position ourselves brilliantly, be compact and uh, concentrate on everything. Hi William, you're a lovely young man. Are you a Manchester City fan, or and now you're playing against the world, the best team in the world? As, as you said yourself, they are. Uh, ever since I have followed football, they have been a, one of the best teams in the world. So, uh, of course, you can. Therefore, I like watching them playing football, and they are a good football team. And uh, but I don't support them. I support Chelsea. I would like to listen to uh, hear a little bit about where Gordia would have put uh, said that he was impressed with uh, how well you stood defensively in your in, the, in your banks and, uh, in your lines. The, the thing that makes gives me the big the big impression on me on this. I, I sit and watch all the managers' press conference before us. And when he, when I watched this, I got an, an annoying feeling because it felt like they was, they respected us, and they were super prepared for a for a game against us, and kind of annoyed me a little bit. And they took total control of the game in in Park and in Copenhagen, there. and they, so they are well prepared and a super team with the with the world class. Manager, world-class football uh, players, and they can just grab grab the the game by the neck. Uh, it's going to be extremely tough. But of course, they are very uh, 
impressed by, by how they did that in Hagen. What, what was it he said that you could feel they were so uh, well prepared for the game against us? I don't know, it's just, a, it's just what he said and the feeling that I got is that they are going to that they don't know what they're up against, they're prepared against us, and they, they, they knew exactly what to do and they took, took control of the game. First of all, you've already been to this city once this season. What is the difference com, com, trying to prepare a team to play against Manchester City compared to Manchester United? simple that, that it's Manchester City right now is a better team and uh, we have played uh, three very very good teams clubs in the group stage Galatasaray by Bayern Munich Manchester United but this is a level or two up um, so obviously when you play against an opponent who is that good then it then, then the demands to us to be as close as possible to our expression as a team on the pitch is uh, is way way more difficult and best case tomorrow we are a little bit closer to the expression that we normally want to have uh, in a European game uh, no matter if we are home and away uh, than we had three weeks ago against Manchester City Park where we lost uh, the surf um, but performance wise we, we, we would have liked to be a little bit closer to, to ourselves. So you can feel the difference between playing Manchester United? And I think that all teams can feel that difference when they play against City. And, and can I also ask you, Scott McKenna, has come in January or whenever it was, what difference has he made? What impact has he had on your team and your squad? No, but he's calm, he's mature, he's, and it's uh, simplicity, and I mean that in a, in a very positive uh, uh, way. He's a, he's a defender with a, with a big D, and, and um, I think he has had a very, very good start in, uh, in Copenhagen, and, and I see him grow. Uh, from the level where he is, uh, where he uh, are at now, um, so he will become even stronger for us um, in terms of uh, reaching our goals for the for the spring in uh, in Copenhagen. More questions, please, Perfum. Thank you, sir.